December. Aldrig någonsin förr hade där funnits så många rovfåglar. Den ihållande kylan hade drivit fram dem ur skogarna. De satt på stolparna till fältgränserna och bland kronorna till fruktträden. Kurade ihop sig på de heliga figurernas huvuden i broar och längs vägskärdens altare. Orörliga hukade de sig i vintersolen. Deras konturer som dunkla hotelser mot de snötäckta fälten och den molnfria himlen. Allt var stilla. Is och snö och gnistrande kallt. Den vida dalen och kullarna i fjärran. Allt glittrande i vitt mot den blekblå himlen. Noch nie var så många rovfågel att se i gewesen. Die lange Kälte hatte sie aus den Wäldern herausgetrieben. Sie saßen auf den Pfosten der Feldbegrenzungen und in den Kronen der Obstbäume. Sie kauerten auf den Köpfen der heiligen Figuren an den Brücken und auf den Kreuzen an den Liedgabelungen. Bewegungslos hockten sie in der Wintersonne. Ihre Umrisse, dunkle Drohungen vor den Schneefeldern und dem wolkenlosen Himmel. Nichts in Bewegung. Eis und Schnee und die Sonne und Kalt. Das breite Tal und die Hügel am Rand, alles weiß glitzernd und der dünn blaue Himmel. In this part is the whole novel. It's about driving uh, with this under, underground, uh, 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 pushing you into different, uh, in, into different ways and trying to look smooth. <laughs> No, I'm, 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 I, I, I fused uh, 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 unbelievable long research into torture and uh, and uh, security uh, industry with uh, with uh, uh, a family I, I I know a lot about and uh, took the last person in this family, the youngest person in this family, he's twenty something. Person and uh, and so it is a, a kind of very real thing. So she worked for the agents of security. Yeah, she's mm -hmm. you, you know she's this lost thing, uh, and her uh, her aunt who actually is a very wicked aunt mm -hmm. uh, is trying in to, real to in real life. Yeah, yeah. In, in real life. Yeah, yeah. this is a real family, mm -hmm. and she in a way a real person. Actually, the uh, astounding thing happened that after one year uh, I got a phone call. And the person calls herself Lucy English, and um, she changed uh, the name of the family, and and she wanted to meet me because there was uh, things about documents of, of her grand, grand great grandmothers I could have had because I researched her great grandmother, and um, and then I met her and she looked exactly like Amy would have looked. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of a really weird experience. <laughs> And uh, I asked her, did she read? Uh, did, does she want to read the novel? And she said, no. no. So I was quite happy. <laughs> But really, uh, there are no clues what she looks like. Of course not. That's one of the yeah, yeah. That's one of the things you never you you have to in, uh, fantasize yourself. There's not uh, a long nose or a short uh, short hair or whatever. Hair might be something. Sometimes dresses are important because they, they, they but the person is always um, uh, what you imagine and what you But the readers are very helpful in that sense. Our mm -hmm. writer, Justin Ekman, said once mm -hmm. that you don't have to give uh, the reader very much until mm -hmm. a full fledged person is there yeah. in their mind. Mm -hmm. sure. And mm -hmm. that's true. While, while uh, descriptions of faces or can be very tedious. I mean, the reader has it already. Yeah. Perception isn't in full sentences. Perception is flashes and, and things. And so it's about um, putting perception into, into language. And, 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 and so uh, there, there is a, a way to know about each other's perception, which we don't cannot do in any other art. But to become this person is the only, is literature uh, the only medium, and uh, that's the reason I love it so much. Mm -hmm. 
No, yeah. I want to. Uh, I want I to say know, that I'm. Like I'm so uh, happy that I have this little book, and I have yeah. a lot of those in at home, okay. and I bring it everywhere, and can okay. say this is the most wonderful love story. <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, we have this. Uh, 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 I was so. Uh, I was so touched uh, when you said uh, that you fashioned it after Max Frisch. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And you know, Max Frisch. Uh, it's such, oh my goodness, no, I don't want to read this guy. Uh, this is really awful, this awful, uh, larmoyant uh, uh, things. And, and yours is so, so fabulous um, that I hope you don't make this and uh, tell n and no one anymore because it stands so much on its own that you don't have to go back. This, the story of A Winter in Stockholm was that it started uh, I started taking notes when my mother lay dying, uh, and I was uh, at her place, uh, living with her, and I, every night I, I wondered, will, will her breath mm -hmm. stop now? Uh, and then while sitting there and waiting, and not, uh, memories of my childhood came up, and I... I, I think I started to think about how her life and my life were intertwined. Mm -hmm. I mean, she, uh, she was a typical uh, housewife of, in the 50s and in the 60s. She, she was a good musician, she could have played, uh, and her, all her possibilities were so, uh, more or less uh, thrown to, to pieces. And, and, uh, not to make it too dull, I have a, a parallel story, uh, <laughs> a parallel story about the daughter's, a, a short love affair, because the daughter has also been deserted by a man, by her husband. Uh, so I try to, uh, in short chapters, I try to, to mingle, I mean it's a kind of a puzzle that mm -hmm. the reader will have to put the pieces there and see what picture comes up. I'm writing a story about divorce, women, mm -hmm. what happens, love, and so on. But very much it's a story about love, and I think not love just to a man, but love itself. Oh yeah. Oh yes, what is love? I mean, mm -hmm. we, we love individuals mostly, but, but is love perhaps even a greater force in our lives? Yes. Are there any things uh, that is difficult to write about as a writer? Are there subjects that you rather avoid or that you have to fight with? Well, in my case, it's very easy to answer. I mean, I, I, I didn't say that this was a biographical story. It is not a biographical story all the way through. Mm -hmm. But of course, I start from a very biographical situation with my mother, and I use the pronoun she then, uh, but it is obvious that I would not have published this story if my mother had been alive. Uh, that's one thing to avoid, to hurt people. Mm -hmm. to <laughs> yeah. uh, may I say something about the modernism? Yes, do. <laughs> I, I do. felt the sting. No, I don't uh, know. Yes, do say uh, something. I would be I happy. I think we have to... I have to keep in mind that we have so different environments. Mm -hmm. I mean, Sweden, mm -hmm. obviously, is a, a land of literature, of uh, 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 tradition, non-tradition, whatever. I sat in, in Vienna in the 60s, in the 70s, and had to decide what to do with the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. And that's a very different position. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I had to really think about what am I going to do. Mm -hmm. And I went to English and read uh, Virginia Woolf and James Joyce and thought, this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. This is what, uh, what, uh, what will give me um, uh, the, a, a, a brokenness which does not pretend nothing happened. That's, mm -hmm. That was the, the beginning. So, uh, of course, until the style was developed. Uh, and they were modernists, of course. Yes. Fifteen years went into, uh, I, I published very late. Mm -hmm. So, so did I, I had, a, had a lot to work through mm -hmm. until I was kind of sure that this is the way you can say it. So, And um, that means that I 
uh, say that everything is uh, socially formed, I can do whatever I want, I'm not bound by any of these birth things or these kind of prefabricated rights. So this is, I defend my art. Shall we? I think it was a lovely. Yes, yes.